Hello and welcome to another video. So today I want to talk to you um, about uh, practical uses of 3D printing. So I'm going to take you on a journey around my home, showing you 20 items that I've printed that I've actually needed. Uh, it saved me having to buy it um, and it works great. Um, and the reason this video has come about is because I get a lot of people asking me, um, can you print me this? Can you print me that? Uh, and often my answer becomes, why don't you buy a 3D printer? Um, and they often say back to me, well, I, I don't know what I'd use it for. Um, so this is uh, a video to tackle that very issue. So it's uh, things that you may not think of around your home that 3D printing can actually provide uh, an answer for. Um, and the, one of the other values of 3D printing is not only fun and creative, but it also allows you to build customizable parts um, and it's repeatable. So you can print as many as you want and it's often much, much cheaper. So without further ado, let's go on with the first item. Starting off with a couple of plant pots here. These have been downloaded from Thingiverse and scaled. Just a couple of nice looking plant pots. Uh, so this one I did it in two colors. Uh, this one was a single color called Rainbow Filament. Got a bit of a tinge to it with different colors. Look very nice on the windowsill. In the front room of my home. Moving on to a couple of uh, plant pot saucers. So this was done in clear filament. Again, downloaded from Thingiverse and scaled. So these, what I did was I measured the um, the plant pots that they were going to go on themselves and then um, sized them up accordingly um, to the various sizes of the plant pots. But as you can see, there are several around the house. This one's still in the front room on the fireplace. So the last one was on the windowsill. This one here moving into the kitchen. So this one was done with uh, two colours again. So you have to stop the print, change the filament. And another one here, the back of the kitchen. So each of these are uh, several hours of printing. Uh, and as you can see, they, uh, they're they waterproof. Um, they hold the, the plant pot correctly, they catch all the soil, so everything you'd want from a saucer. So uh, it's been included here as a very useful print. The next thing I wanna show you is um, this cam holder for the PlayStation 4, which uh, I designed in three separate pieces. So basically the idea of this um, is to hold the camera on top of my TV. As you can see here, the three pieces in place. So I measured the, the width of the TV. Uh, for each of the pieces, the diameter of the camera, and then this middle piece, um, as you'll see later on, acts as a um, angle alteration uh, via the wire. So wherever you put the wire on the slant, um, it angles the camera or pull down or wherever you need it. Quite a simple design, really. Very simple self-explanatory, this one. It's a wire spool. Um, just a tidy load of wires that I had around the TV. Uh, this is actually a charging cable for a wireless keyboard. Uh, so I don't need it all the time. It's just every now and again. But it's handy to have around. But um, it looks much neater on this uh, wire spool. So this uh, design, very tried and tested. I'm sure a lot of people print these out. Uh, very useful things. Mobile phone stands. So you can uh, prop it up somewhere when you're uh, busy with your hands. Cooking or laying in bed. So these are just two separate designs that, uh, again, I found off uh, Thingiverse. It's just scaled them. Uh, one of them has an, uh, an N sunken into it. Uh, pretty neat. So you can uh, customise them. Um, so for instance, with Thingiverse, you could edit this file. It's completely editable. Um, yep, very nice design, very quick. So this is a very funky looking design. It's a mobile phone amplifier, as you can see. So you slot your phone in the front and it amplifies the sound via um, the, the tubes, so the narrowing of the uh, compressing of the sound, um, a natural amplifier. So this was a real killer for my printer. It took uh, several goes to, uh, to print it properly uh, and I think it was a 12 hour print, something like that. Uh, again, using the rainbow filament. So it looks pretty nice. Um, and this is just a demonstration of, uh, of how it sounds. So moving into the kitchen, this is a soap dish holder uh, over the sink, uh, it's printed in two parts. So this is my own design, I uh, did it using uh, Tinkercad, which is a baby cad package, which I urge you to try, it's very simple. 
uh, and able to just play with uh, simple shapes. But uh, this is the result, and um, the bottom tray is just uh, suckered onto the wall, so I made allowances for that um, in the back plate. Okay, so staying in the kitchen. So uh, this is my espresso machine, and occasionally the, um, the pods don't pop when you uh, lower the lever on the machine. Uh, so I designed this coffee pod popper, I call it, where you press the capsule into it. So it's got some spikes on the inside, which uh, pierce the foil. Um, and when you take it out, uh, you've got these little holes here, uh, which is essentially the job of what the coffee machine does anyway uh, when it perforates it. Um, but uh, it saves me having to get the knife out to make lots of tiny little holes when it doesn't perforate it. So as you can see, it needs a bit of refinement. I mean, this is version three of the pod popper. Um, so it's got a few spikes in there at different heights. Uh, to take into account the sag um, when you push the, um, the capsule into it. Sticking with the coffee machine, uh, this is a, a very simple on the wall pod holder for six pods. Uh, not my design, downloaded it on Thingiverse. Uh, once again, very simplistic, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Printed in two parts, um, and I just uh, stuck it to the wall with some um, double sided sticky tape. And uh, there it is, in all its glory. So moving on, this is a simple coffee cup coaster. So I took um, the company I work for, I took their logo, and I just sunk it into a disc, as I measured the size of the mug, obviously. Uh, just kept it very simple, printed it in white, and uh, it works very well. So I stayed in the kitchen. This is the dishwasher. So one of our stoppers on the runner here um, fell off, lost it, can't find it anywhere. So I went online and uh, someone had very kindly made this uh, this stopper here as a replacement. So I printed it in uh, ABS uh, because I figured that it's going to be uh, subject to some higher temperatures uh, over PLA. Uh, it's been in place now for well over two years. Works very well and very simple as you can see. Still in the kitchen. Uh, these are some electrical plug covers um so the reason for this is with it being in the kitchen so the um we have a bit of liquid splashing around when you've got wet hands and uh you want around the kitchen so this is just to cover up the extension cable that we've got there so we don't uh, set fire to anything so this is a 3d print camera monitor i made it's uh, made up of several parts the pole the foot piece and then the camera mount and the camera mount has another separate back black piece to actually mount the camera and infrared board uh, and this, this thing can slide up and down the pole um, to adjust the height uh, as the print goes bigger or uh, if you you know if you mount the camera on a different level. And uh, it's attached to a Raspberry Pi um, on, um, on my network so I can view the, the camera print remotely. So here I want to demonstrate um, two identical sync plugs, um, identical as in the design. One printed in flexible PLA, one printed in uh, rigid PLA. So I did this uh, initially squidgy because it was a plug. Uh, I thought it had mould better to uh, the edges to keep the water in. But as it happens, it didn't make a lot of difference. Um, they're designed from a very standard size. Uh, so I just resized them um, according to the UK um, plug uh, sink holes. Uh, and as you can see here, they, um, they hold the water very well. Um, and a very good replacement for an actual plug, which died a long time ago. And here we have another very simple design, uh, just a tablet holder uh, mounted onto the wall. So this, I designed it um, to be as kind of thin as possible so it didn't stick out too far. Uh, and just to help me, um, when I'm on the drums, I can feed in audio from uh, various sources uh, straight into my module to play along to. So here we are in the garage. Pretty self-explanatory these, uh, just some hooks that I printed in ABS. Again, I mean, they cracked as I put them in because um, I used two bigger screws, but still useful nonetheless. So staying in the garage, just want to talk to you about these uh, wire spools that uh, I designed myself. So these are bespoke. Um, so one of them holds the solder, another one holds the wire. Uh, but uh, here I will show you how I um, change the, the, the spools so you get a bit of space around it. Um, so it's got a, an end that pulls out, as you can see it's a hollow tube, I had to put some masking tape on it just to, um, to make it a bit tighter fit, uh, but as you can see it's very quick, very easy, you can do it with one hand, and, uh, and it just sits onto the, the spool in front of me, so I can uh, neatly roll the solder away when I don't need it, but simply pull it as much as I need as I use it, so very easy. So nothing much to talk about this one. Um, I, again, a block of ABS. I measured the width of my phone um, and um, this screws onto the top of an existing tripod. Uh, it doesn't hold it very well. You have to take the casing out um, and you have to be a bit careful with it. But uh, as a, a very 
quick and easy, simple solution. It works really well. So here we are in the car with a phone holder. So this one's a bit of a work in progress. Um, as you can see, it doesn't quite fit, but it was um, designed to fit in the cup holder. So the phone in the top um, and the cable comes up through a hole in the bottom so that it sits neatly. Um, but as you can see here, it, uh, it needs a little bit of refinement, uh, maybe a bit less plastic. So this is just me showing you how it goes in. Um, I do use it uh, in its current form. Uh, can get quite annoying when it falls down, but uh, just a little bit of rework um, and it will be perfect. Okay, I just want to mention these as well, uh, just some Christmas decorations. So this is the Raspberry Pi logo um, and some nice shiny filament. Uh, this is a table decoration that sits on top of an existing uh, light that's to simulate a, a candle, so like a tea light. Um, so again, I just I found the design of a Christmas tree, measured the, uh, the hole for it to slot into uh, and it works very nicely. So there you go. That was the journey around my home. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I did mention uh, Tinkercad and Thingiverse quite a bit, uh, just because they seem to be my uh, go-to resources. So Thingiverse is just chock full of different STL files and models that people have done, and uh, they are often uh, editable. Um, and again, t uh, Tinkercad is a very kind of uh, easy to use CAD package that really holds your hand all the way through the process. Um, I mean, it's quite limited, but um, when you're first starting out, just um, the concept of designing in 3D, uh, the three different planes, um, you know, is often kind of difficult with the other packages because it's just they throw so much at you from the start. So, uh, so get used to using Tinkercad. It's free to sign up. Um, and again, Thingiverse is a free resource for the SDL files. Uh, so again, hope you enjoyed this. Um, please comment um, and let me know if there's uh, some things that you like, some things that uh, you think should be included um, and share some builds of your own. I'd love to hear about it. Um, so yeah, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.